What's up, folks? Welcome to O'Leary's Garden, where life is a garden. Today I'm going to talk to you about building a run on your chicken coop. But to start things off, I want to let you know that this is not a one-size-fits-all video. But I still want you to stick around, because that's the whole point. This is not a step-by-step -step video instruction on how to do this. I'll talk you through what I've done here, but the whole point is the critical thinking, developing the skill set to do these things yourself, and taking control of what you're trying to, <laughs> trying to do. I'm just looking at that, that board right there. It looks really crooked to me, but the level says she's perfect. Um, some things are probably screwed up here because... Um, this is an old shed. We just moved in here uh, last month, this uh, 2020, uh, June. And this house was built in 1960, so I don't know when this, uh, when this shed, I don't know how old it is. The roof was sagging a bit. So I don't know where, excuse me, I don't know what we're looking at as far as this, this here. This is called a ridge pole. It's typically put on an A-frame roof. Where you'd have these. This is a rafter coming off the opposite side. So if you can picture the roof on your house, right there. So the ridge pole would run right, right through the middle, and these rafters would come up to meet at this point. Got me? Okay. So to do this yourself. You're gonna take these. This is a four by four post. You can go six by six. You could do it out of a two by fours. You could do whatever, whatever makes you happier. It's right here. It's four inches by four inches. Well, it's actually three and a half by three and a half. That's just the way they cut lumbers today. Two by four is an inch and a half by three and a half inches. So I set these posts on the outside. These four. These are eight foot long. I dug them two feet into the ground. You can see the bare dirt. Dug them two feet into the ground, and then I poured a couple of bags of sackcrete, which is a three or four dollar, 50 pound bag of concrete you can get at Lowe's, usually your local hardware store. I dumped a half a bag in each hole and I spread it with a hose. That's it. Okay, you want to level it. Don't get it level while you're filling it back in with dirt. Which I did. I, I sprayed it with the hose and I started filling it back in with dirt right away. It'll dry by itself. That, that, that's my opinion. This is not going anywhere. She's sturdy. Okay. Now here on the outsides I took a four foot, 48 inch, four foot roll of chicken wire and I ran along the outside perimeter all the way around, okay? But it only comes three foot up and I buried the bottom foot in the ground to prevent foxes and anything like that from getting in here. And then what I also did is I took some more of that sacrete and I put about a bag for each section here. And I dumped that down on top of the chicken wire that I buried. Sprayed it with the hose. And all the scrap pieces from the cut chicken wire. And that there, that on the top section there, I'm sorry. That's called hardware mesh. All the scrap pieces... I kind of rolled up and I buried in the trench that I dug around the perimeter just for some extra preventative measure. It's all galvanized, so it should last a long time. Honestly, it'll probably last longer buried than it will out here. And then I filled the trench in. 
This here is what I'm calling a roosting pole. It's just a 90 degree right angle shelf holder type deal. You can get at your hardware store at Lowe's. And they have little holes on the bottom that I screwed up into the wood to hold it down. And this is just a place for our chickens to sleep. I ran into a problem here where this is going to be the run out here. I'm going to fence this in. Um, this one ended up being a little too small for for our 15 birds with the potential of expanding into a meat flock. That kind of deal. Um, just not enough. So this is 8 by 16. Now for these rafters, once you get your poles set, you're gonna take, that's a two by six up top. You're gonna take that board, hold it up, you know, around about the angles that you want. Hold it flush, flush, excuse me, with your ridge beam. Hold your rafter up. And then mark the inside where it's gonna sit. See that? So when you're holding this on the outside, you'll be able to mark this angle with a pencil. And the same thing with that. You'll be able to mark that angle with a pencil. And then you can take it over to your saw horses and cut it down with your skill saw. Circular saw. For the ridge beam, you want to make sure that you get some good meat to hold it up. So here in your shed, or whatever building you're using, you want to make sure that where you're setting that ridge beam on the outside, it's right here. You don't make sure that where you run your screws in, you hit these and get some real good meat. Some good wood for those threads to hang on to. You see, all these are nails. They're holding up the shingles. So these here in particular are on two foot centers. All right, so it's two foot from the center of this one to the center of this one. Same with each outside edge. It's the same two foot from here to here, two foot from here to here. All right, so once you've hit your first one, you can measure every two foot after that and get your screws in there to hold up your ridge beam. Chickies! Now, there's about what I got for you for knowledge, aside from this. This is the last thing I can say to you. See that? That piece right there? All those imperfections. You see that? See that? You see that? <laughs> this is not grade A, thousand dollars an hour craftsmanship. This is something I built myself. And when it's done, I get to say that. I get to say I built this myself. Now, does it, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. It's got flaws. But she looks okay, right? It's okay. I'm all right with having that in my yard. You can see these here. That is an, I'm an electrician. That's in a, a staple, a wire staple. That's what I used to hold all this on. But then I crimped it at the seams with wood. So that's the whole purpose of this board and this board and that one there. It's just to cover the seams and to make it look kind of pretty. There could be a cheaper way to do that. I don't know. So I stapled it at the, the bottom and I stapled them together 
at the seams onto that board that I put to cover it up. And then up here, I staple it to the outside rafter. And then see, everything is going to come out an inch and a half when I sandwich the wire against the post and the outside rafter. It's all going to match up with this inch and a half that's sandwiching the wire to the post. Same thing up here at the rafter. So this one, this board here is mainly decorative. It helps hold the wire a little bit too. It's going to be a pain in the butt to replace the wire the way I've done it because I'm going to have to pull all these trim boards off. But there you go. It's nothing crazy. If you can use a tape measure and you can use a skill saw and impact drill or regular drill, don't matter. If you, if you can drive a screw, you can do that. You can do it, no problem. If I can do it, you can do it. Mine don't even look good. You can probably make it look better than I did. So do it. If you want chickens, you're scared about building a run, just give it a shot. Try it out. If you screw it up, these boards aren't that expensive. They're really not. That one right there, that's a 10 foot 2 by 6. I think it costs $5. You screw up that cut, you could buy another one. It's not going to kill you. You can do it. Alright, please do it. Please do it. Take care of yourself. Feed yourself. Turn your backyard into your own grocery store. Now, with that, if you enjoy what I'm trying to do here, please consider doing your shopping at www.olearylink.com. I will put a link in the description. And thank you very much for watching. Take care.